Here, hold on. Why don't you switch me? They're actually here. I need Let me hand, me hand me the can. Okay. I don't think so. I, I get the right one. Good. That's why we go blue cat fishing. Oh my goodness gracious. Rich Vernon, man, good to see you again. Good to see you, Kirby. So I've had the pleasure of pheasant hunting with you. I've had the pleasure of crappie fishing with you several times through our mutual friendship of Joe Schiebel. Uh, and I understood that you were a pretty good blue cat fisherman, and I was so excited when I found out that you were recently added to the B&M Ambassador Pro Staff Program. Yes, sir. You know, I, I, I got mixed up or, or hooked up with uh, the folks at B&M through Jason McDuffie and yourself, and... Uh, great people they've really supported me and, and as i move into maybe a new facet of my life and and uh really enjoy it. i have been in rods even before i knew that this this sponsorship or ambassadorship occurred yeah. or happened you know so uh so no great uh, great folks and and we're hoping to do some good things for them well i know you will i mean you've got a great reputation as the sheriff of nemaha county sheriff of nemaha county yeah. that's correct yes. so uh, i'll put my hands up yeah <laughs> no. but uh, also uh you've got a great reputation of guiding people and putting people on big blue cats. We, we try, you know, there's, uh, we can put them on a fish. Now, whether the fish cooperate and bite, that's always a different thing, but uh, we've had some good luck. You know, uh, our mutual friend, Joe Schiebel, uh, we've we put a couple 50 pluses in the boat with him and, and some other people uh, along the way. So no, we catch a lot of big fish. Uh, you know, the nice thing about blue cat fishing is that uh, Every bite could be a big one. You just never know. Right. And that's, you know, that's part of the reason I'm here is because not only do I want to do a great catfish eat live, right. but I can't have Joe Sheeple having anything over on me. Am I right? I, I got to admit, <laughs> he's got it on both of us. It was my boat, but he's actually caught a bigger PB than I have out of my boat. So, oh, uh, no. you know, my PB is 51 and, and uh, Joe caught a 56 out of my boat. So, uh, And what a great boat, Ranger yeah. boat. And we've got some great, some, uh, some wonderful weather it's been kind of cold and rainy in kansas but uh, today it's looking pretty good i i called mother nature this morning to see if she could uh, slack off of the wind and the rain a little bit and give us a couple hours out here to have a good time and tell us where we're at exactly we are in the stockdale area of tuttle creek reservoir okay uh, not, not a great well-known reservoir for for uh for blue cats however it has recently became very very active in that area uh, it's you know milford's been the the big uh, go-to for blues but uh encourage anyone to want to get out here that that uh Tuttle creek is really picking up a, a good reputation this time okay and it's pretty good uh reputation for crappie it has huge huge crappie you know what you when you talk about big blues you, when you're looking for a big crappie you're looking for that 16 17 inch crappie all the time they're in here really they're in here maybe uh, you know maybe we could do a mixed bag we might do a little <laughs> Something, uh, as I told you, it's really just, just starting down here. Water temperature on Sunday when I was down here was 55 degrees towards 56 I think in the next few few days is going to it's going to be some rain but after that I think it's going to warm up and I think it's going to be on fire down here nice all right well so uh, what's the presentation today we're going to be throwing cut bait um, we're going to be stationary spot locked in areas we're going to drive around we're going to look for them on the uh, on the Garmin uh, units and as soon as we find a good population of blue cats we're going to set up on them and we're just going to cast to them we'll give them about 30 minutes in each spot if they're not hungry we'll move on and try to find some that are and what rod are we going to use we're using the B&M Silvercat Elite. Uh, great, great rod, great tip, great backbone. 
Um, you know, I, I had these rods before I ever got involved with, uh, with B&M, had some of them, and they helped me out and got me some others. Um, but they do a great job on these great, they can catch anything from a two pound blue all the way up to a 60, 80, 100 pound blue. Wow, and are we gonna be holding these rods or is this kind nope. of this contraption here, this uh, We're uh, gonna be using rod the, holders? what's called circle hooks. They're gonna be setting in the rod holders and when they do bite, most of the time they will set themselves. We're not using a type of hook where you actually jerk the bait to set the hook. Because that takes them out of their mouth, it does. right? You it just does. reel to the pressure. Exactly, we're gonna reel down on them and as soon as we know they're hooked up, then we'll take them out of the rod holders and we'll go from there. Okay, hey, I'm very excited. And uh, who are we fishing with today? We're fishing with Bella. Bella is my fishing companion. Where you at, Bella? She's, Come on, Belle. She's peeing on my tires. <laughs> <laughs> I usually do that. Let's go, Belle. There she is. She heard that. She heard go. Okay. We'll get Bella loaded up. She might have done this once or twice. So. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, once or twice. <laughs> she knows exactly what oh. she's doing. Hey, <laughs> Bella, you ready to catch some blue cat? <laughs> she just licked the screen. <laughs> All right, let's do this. I'm All right, excited. Let's go fishing. <laughs> So when we're looking for these blue cats, what's the trick? We're looking for pods. Blue cats travel in pods. Yeah. So uh, we're looking for, on the uh, side scan here, uh, we're looking out about 90 feet. We're uh -huh. looking for a concentration of little white dots, basically, is what we're looking for. Okay. Um, there are a few in here, nothing, not, not what I would call fishable. You know, we're looking for 30, 40 of those dots on the screen if we can, and if we can find a spot like that, that's definitely what I call fishable. If there's 100, that's a lot better. Uh -huh. but, okay. Uh, but we're at 12 foot of water. I, I anticipate they're going to be shallower than this, but I thought I'd stop and take a look just to make sure. There are, we're starting to pick up a few, no big ones. Just, uh, I don't know if the camera will pick up. There's one up in the water. There's one right there. There's another one over here. I mean, they're kind of spread out through here, but, but not big concentrations. So we're going to look for a little better spot than this. All right. So that big arc right there. That big arc right there is a nice fish. How big do you think that one is? Um, you know, I would say that guy's 50 plus. About 50 plus, huh? Yeah. Right there. So you can even see the, the V in his tail. Oh yeah, look at that, you can. And it, that's the Garmin side imaging? Yep. You can see the V in that tail. That is a huge shadow. <laughs> Woo, looks like we've got quite an assortment of bait. What do we got going on here? We're gonna get put a little buffet out there in the water for the for the blue cats. See what we see what they like today. Yeah. Um, we got some super concoction concoction using chicken. Um, we've got a crappie laying there now. A lot of people get confused on the crappie, uh -huh. but if you're in a lake like this one where there's no length limit and that crappie was legally caught on a landline, yeah, or, or on a hook, which it was, you can use those for bait in these lakes. Really? Now, if if it's a lake, you can't do a throw net or something like we catch shad for and keep them. That's illegal. But if they're legally caught by a rod and reel, which uh -huh. these were, yeah. and then go to a lake that doesn't have a length limit on it, you can use them for bait. And okay. crappie are oftentimes great bait for uh, bluegills. Okay, well, I'll, I'll volunteer to catch some bait for you. All right, for all right. <laughs> if we run out yeah, later yeah, on. There you go. And we got a bluegill. I know that those are coming into season, and we've got Billy Blakely uh, down at the Blue Bank Resort. He's he's catching them on Real Foot Lake. Yeah, and you like that Blue Bank Resort because we've shot some ducks on Real Foot Lake. I do. Real I Lake. do. That is a great place. Ronnie I go back caps. there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Ronnie was coming to mind today as I was driving down here. You know, the weather's a little bit less than great. Yeah. And I'm still I'm to quote Ronnie Cap. You know, I got to be good when it's bad, so I can be great when it's good. Yeah, that is his quote. Okay, so so how do we do it? How do we cut them All up? All right, so we're gonna we're gonna chunk these up. Uh -huh. Sometimes they like the headpiece. We're gonna keep that. But the very first piece, we're probably gonna put a couple, uh, what they call gut pockets out. Yeah. And now I like to trim them up. Not everybody would do this. Um, I like it to make it as easy for that fish to get it in his mouth as possible. Oh, so you cut the so hard cut, parts. Yeah, off. exactly. Anything that would would hang up, I catch them or cut them off. Now these aren't what I call huge baits. I uh -huh. mean that's a, a fair size bait, but a 50 pound blue cat's got a mouth that could take a you know take 30 of those in at the same time. They're huge. Okay. Um, so that's not a problem. We're gonna do the same thing here to the bluegill. 
I usually start with the gut pockets fishing. If that doesn't work, then I go to the heads. Okay. And of course, gut pocket. It's got a pocket that's got the gut. Got gut the pocket. juice. Yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. You know, uh, blue cats, like all catfish, have sensories, uh, sm smell sensories all over their body. And that's how they find stuff in this muddy water. Not just in their nose. No, huh? no, not in their, just in their whiskers, but they have it all over their body. And then we got one other little, uh, Ooh, little deal. This is actually chicken. Chicken? Yeah, it is chicken. That looks um, like chicken breast. It is chicken breast. This is a high um, dollar bait. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in this day and age. Know, the, the die hard uh, catfish guys look at you like you're crazy when you fish, but I tell you what, I fish with what works. Yeah. Um, and there's a little dead red uh, from catfish, uh, Team catfish in there with it. Yeah, it spreads out in the water and they bite it. Yeah, facts of life. If they bite it, I'll use it. And that's like an oil that you soak meat in, right? It is. That, yeah, it's and it disperses of... when it gets back in the water. It will disperse out, and uh, and the, the fish will pick up on that scent and then follow it into the bait. And if you want a place that you know you can get that, you can get that at the Grizzly Jig Company. You can because they can. they also sell a lot catfish, of yeah. uh, uh, catfish stuff there. They so. do. They okay, do. so circle hooks. Circle hooks. Um, bait cut. How how do we apply it? Okay, so we're gonna we take. I travel for, with my weights off uh -huh. of my rods because when the weights are banging around there in that nice trip that we brought in, uh -huh. um, they like to hit the rods and cause damage to them. So these are also team catfish. Okay. They're offset uh, uh, circle hooks. It's got a bend in it. I it see. It does, and it's not quite so that the turns the turns the pressure exactly. Yeah, and they hook up. Like I said, these are not hooks where when you get a bite, you set the hook or jerk on it. Uh huh. We'll simply crank down at, uh, on the reel okay. while while it's still inside of the holder. Uh huh. And then as soon as we know that fish is hooked up, then we'll take the fishing rod out of uh, out of the holder and start working the fish. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these chucks, these gut pockets, and we're going to hook them through the top. Don't have to have a lot of hook. What we don't want to do is close up this gap. Okay. If we close up that gap, you'll have a hard time uh, getting a hookup set in the fish's mouth. I got you. So, so, so just real thin. Right, right. Okay, so you have more of a hook space exactly. to hook up. Exactly. I got you. We don't want anything in that hook's way or that point's way when it comes around to hook into uh, to the fish. And what reels are we using on these um, B&M rods? You know, I've got a mixture of reels. These are Abba Garcia. Um, they're 6500 60, C's, C3's. Ambassadors? They are, ambassadors. Um, That's what my dad used to use for catfish. They, they, they never wear out. I yeah. mean, they're, they're just great. You know, they never wear out. They cast great. They handle big fish. Now, we, I've also got a set of pins. Um, these actually are, are striper specials. Yeah. They're no different than a catfish special other than the fact that they're blue. Okay. Um, so, uh, I got these on sale, you know, all about saving money. Right. <laughs> so, I got these on sale. Put these things where we're using 65 to 80 pound line, tug of war line, um, another team catfish product. Uh, but uh, this this stuff all all works for these big big fish when you're trying to hook up on a 50 plus pound fish. Speaking of blue, later on you got to tell me about this blue hat you have on because that's got a little specialty to it. It does. Right? It does. It's got a little it's got a little story to it. All right, we'll talk about that after we get these out. So we got the weights on. Everybody uses different types of weights, but while we're stationary, I just use a uh, a three ounce barbell weight. Uh -huh. it just keeps it from moving around a little bit. Let's see, let's go. So are these blue cat out here moving? Or are they stationary? Are they searching for food? What's the you know? Setup? Uh, I'm not a biologist by any means. My experience shows blue cats move all the time. All the time. They're they constantly moving around in little pod groups. Kind of like sharks, right? They they have to move. They well, keep swimming. Yeah, I, I don't know if that actually is part of their living or not, but I know they never seem to slow down or stop. Now, flatheads will right. tuck up and stick structure and stuff. Flatheads, right? they'll all set on the bottom. They'll set in a, a brush pile, whatever the case may be. The blues seem to move all the time, yeah. and I think that's one of the reasons why blue channel or blue catfish are so good eating. Uh -huh. Their meat is so white and flaky, it's not like a channel cat or a flat. A flatheads are pretty decent, Yeah. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, hey, you got a bend on that already. 
Yeah, the boat, you got to remember the boats are going back and forth just a little bit. Okay. So what we're looking for, we're looking for aggression. Just we're looking for that thing to really, really bend over, really start blacking. Okay. As we sat here with the trolling motor in, in spot lock, the, the back of the boat is going to keep back and forth. Uh huh. So we'll know when we have a. Oh yeah, yeah. These blues as a rule bite to where there's no doubt that you have a fish on. Uh huh. I don't, I don't know, Bell, if you're much of a bird dog. Oh no! Come here! Come here! Come here! Come here, Bell. Sit down. Sit. 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 Let me in. I'll sit. I don't know if you're much of a duck dog. <laughs> when we got a duck right there. Why aren't you looking at that duck? <laughs> Bike to him, but he, like I said, he ain't real big. That's blue cat bike. That's blue cat bike. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, do I need to do anything? Hey, hey, hey! Bella likes to give a lick. Yeah. Stay away from that hook, Bell. Yeah. Well, all right. See that that hook slipped right underneath his tooth patch and right right through. And normally it'll be in the side of the mouth. But yeah. It, he might have been at a little bit of an angle when he took off running. Right. And uh, I don't know. Like I said, you'll see it on the set. But that pole bent about half over. Yeah. Well, we might have to get the fly out there. Come. How big's that one? That one I'd say is about eight pounds. About eight pounds. Yeah, six to eight pounds, somewhere in that neighborhood. What's the limit here on? Um, you can keep, you can keep up to ten fish. Uh huh. But only one of them can be over thirty inches. Okay. So I mean, technically, if we were keeping eater fish, this would be what they call an eater fish. Yeah. Um, you know, my rule is uh, anything over ten pounds, CPR. Okay. It, photograph it and release it. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, if we were keeping eaters, this would be a really good eater right here. Are, right are we going to keep it? No. Uh, not, would you like to eat it? Do you, they're great eat. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, we'll fillet it. We'll send it home with you. You try. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I would love to try. But I think you'll be surprised. People give catfish a bad name over the years by not tasting very good. These blues are really, really good. Yeah. You know the line's coming closer and closer and closer to us? Yeah. Right, you ready? Yeah, go I'm ahead. I'm pretty sure he's on there. Hold on one second. Hold on. I gotta go. He's gonna get underneath the boat. Alright, go ahead. Oh, he's over there. <laughs> He looks like a big one. It is. It's in the drag. Oh yeah. Right. Is he coming? You switch me. Oh, he's right there. Oh, we probably better need to reel in all these uh, uh, rods. We're too late for that. We're too late. Uh, okay, I want you on this rod. You want me on it? Nah, on he's underneath rod. the. He's underneath the boat. I don't know how to deal with that. Well, we got the motor up there. He's going out. Oh, he's going there out. He's going out. Okay. All right. All right. You give me the camera. This is a nice fish. Okay, I just want to feel it. 
All right, it's recording. Just kind of keep me in the loop. I got to claim any? Well, we don't want to try to put him in a boat till he's done. So. Do I need to loosen the drag? No, he'll do his thing. Keep him up, right? Yep. Just keep t keep tension on him on a rod tip. Okay. How are we gonna grab a fish like this? We're gonna get our pliers out. Is he? Oh, there he came on. Okay. Let's take a look at him. Oh, he's long. <laughs> oh, we got a long fish here. Just about to suggest let's go catch some crappie. <laughs> <laughs> and this buddy shows up. That's what I say, because you're catching blues, every every bite could be a big fish. Alright. Act like he's losing a little smoke. Alright, let's reel him down. Let's reel up that to about where that thing's about three foot higher, the, the weight's about three foot higher. One more time down. Alright. Now I'm gonna have to let's see if we can see, get a go ahead and pull him up and see if we can get a good look at him in the water. Okay. There he is. That's a 40 plus. All right, I'm gonna have to put this camera down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's pull him up. I need the line. Is what I need. Okay. Hold on. Let me back up a little bit. Get him? Okay. No bell. No bell. Oh my goodness. Need some help? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's why we go blue catfish. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness. Look at that. I gotta step back. My goodness, how big a fish is that? I'd say he's a 40. A 40. Oh. Maybe, bigger. Oh. Maybe bigger. Maybe bigger. Oh my goodness gracious. Man, thank you so much for sharing that with me. That is a tank. A tank. Dang, nabbit. That is amazing. I can see why this become it's addicting. Qu quite yeah. addicting. Oh my goodness. All right, man, let's catch another one. All right. <laughs> Ooh, we're just going to turn him loose after we take that out. Yeah, we'll turn him loose. We'll get a measurement to weight on him. Okay. And you said we were talking about the blue hat that yeah. you got on. It's yeah. got, it marked. Um, they tagged got, some fish. They've got 2,500 blue cats uh, tagged in this lake. Yeah. And as you catch a blue cat, if you catch a tag, when you call it in. Yeah. And uh, they get a weight and a measurement on him for their for their records. Yeah. And then they send you these nice blue hats. All right. We were lucky enough to catch three tag fish in two days of fishing. Wow. So uh, unusual. But, yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get him taken care of. Okay. So how old do you think a fish like that is? You know, I'd bet this fish has ever been a 20 plus years old. Really? That's why I think it's so important, to, you know, to protect our resources. Yeah, I got it. And get these fish put back in the water. Okay. I mean, uh, that's just, a, I mean, why would you want to, in my opinion, waste a resource like this? No, no, no. You know, there's there's no reason. We can catch all the eaters we want. Uh-huh. And you get a big old a big old girl like this. Trophy you know, fish. Exactly. Well, and, you know, give it a chance for everybody else to catch something like that. Yeah. Oh, you're you're a good sportsman, Rich Vernon. Let's get a weight on her. Okay. Forty-two something. Forty-two something. Yeah. <laughs> you were right on the money when you said forty. 
Because, see, I was going to say it's about 100. <laughs> <laughs> they feel like it, don't they? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Isn't that handy? It is on these fish. All right. 43 inches. 43 inches. Yep, 43 inches long. Damn, wow, that's amazing. All right. All right, let's, uh, how do you, do you is there any way of releasing? Do you yep, have to... we're going to put her back in the water if you're ready. Yeah. And we're going to get her working just a little bit. She's still in pretty good shape. Oh, yeah, she's still fighting. Oh, yeah. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. <laughs> good girl. Oh, my goodness. Woo! <laughs> oh man! I five on that. I'll get slimed. Woohoo! Oh, that's awesome. Forty-three pound, forty-two pound, forty-three inch blue cat at Tuttle Creek. Absolutely. You know, to me, that's that's the excitement. Every bite can be a big fish. Yeah. Thank you, Rich Vernon. You bet. <laughs> Oh man, I had so much fun today. Thank you so much, Rich, for Absolutely. showing me how to do this and uh, taking me out here and showing me Tuttle Creek. I'd never experienced this. And look at that out there. Oh, Big I, old lake. I definitely want to come back here in a week or so and try to catch some crappie when they get on those banks. Uh, man, those, that one fish. You know, you take somebody out there and they catch a fish like that, they'll never forget it for the rest of their lives. Absolutely. And I know I won't. And I can't thank you enough, and, and thank you again for your service, man. You appreciate we appreciate it. Uh, definitely appreciate everything that you do to you know serve and protect, and and as long as you've done it, how many years you've been a sheriff? Thirty uh, sheriff, uh, sixteen years, been all together thirty two years. Wow, man! Thank you so, so much for you bet. protecting and serving. So, you bet. hey, you guys, subscribe to the channel and. Uh, Hit that like and subscription uh, bell, and if you have any questions uh, or comments or anything that you'd like to know or, or share with myself or Rich Vernon, leave it in the comment section. We'll be glad to answer it, won't we? You bet. Thank See you next time. All right. Thank you, buddy. Thank you so much for watching Fish, Eat, Live. Our mission is to demonstrate the benefits of the Fish, Eat, Live lifestyle. We look forward to educating, entertaining, and attracting you to the healthy lifestyle of the great outdoors. We're definitely going to have some wholesome family fun on the water every Sunday at 6 p.m. So hit that subscription and that notification bell because we want you to come be a part of this.